What happens in America matters to the entire free world, and these days America, like most places, is infested with Islamic supremacist pressure groups who falsely claim to speak for all Muslims and who spend their time playing the professional victim, pestering politicians and law enforcement agencies with their constant whining and complaining and belly aching and bitching and demanding special treatment. One of these groups, the ludicrously named Council on American Islamic Relations, has been quite busy recently setting up a new department dedicated to, guess what, Islamophobia. Who'd have predicted that? They'll be looking for Islamophobia everywhere in America, and you know they're going to find it because they see it everywhere. My bet is it's only a matter of time before they contrive to find it right in the Oval Office. Obama's already on one knee to Islam. It shouldn't take much to get him down on two. Islamophobia is a word that says a lot more about the person using it than the one it's directed at, so if you're ever tempted to throw it at somebody, try to bear that in mind. When I hear the word, I know I'm listening to someone whose intelligence and judgment have been corrupted by the cultural Marxism of political correctness and whose opinions need no longer be taken seriously. What amazes me is that anyone takes this phony word seriously. Young people can be forgiven for thinking it's always been part of the language, but the truth is this word didn't even exist just a few years ago. It was deliberately invented by Islamic supremacists and their left-wing enablers as a way to silence critics of Islamic brutality, intolerance, misogyny, homophobia and anti-Semitism and to stigmatise those who oppose religious fascism by inferring that they have a mental disorder. Of course, there are only so many times you can tell someone who doesn't want to hear it that a phobia is an irrational fear and that there's nothing remotely irrational about fearing Islam, especially if you happen to be female or Jewish or gay or all three. What is irrational is indulging Islam and pretending it's just another religion. That's more than irrational. It's downright stupid. It's as foolish as keeping a large predatory wild animal as a pet. Sooner or later, you will be eaten and you will deserve it. People who oppose Islam are not Islamophobic, they're Islamo-realistic. They've had years of abundant and consistent evidence, and they see the religion for what it is, a supremacist totalitarian ideology using its peaceful followers as a shield to exploit religious freedom for political ends. And Islamophobia is all part of the scam, but Islamophobia doesn't exist, especially not in America, and recent figures prove it. According to the FBI, there are ten times more hate crimes against Jews and gays in America than there are against Muslims, and the same thing applies in figures compiled by individual states, California, New York, way more crimes against Jews and gays. How unfortunate for the Islamofascists that these cold hard facts should emerge just as they've set up their shiny new department dedicated to finding evidence of this mythical crime. Do you think these liars will now shut down this department and apologise for lying, or do you think they'll carry on lying, complaining, whining, belly aching, bitching, and demanding special treatment? A tough call, isn't it? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It must be galling for these guys to realise that although people may resent Islam, and who can blame them for that, they don't resent Muslims, as two young Muslim men found out just a few months ago when they drove 13,000 miles around America and were welcomed wherever they went. The biggest hate crime against Muslims in America is the existence of the Council on American Islamic Relations. If you're a Muslim American who wants to live in peace and freedom, and presumably that's why you're in America in the first place, these people are your worst enemy. They're parasites on your identity. They don't represent you. They claim ownership of you. Everything they do and say reflects back badly on you. Yet you are the only thing giving them a veneer of respectability. Without you, these fanatics would be standing on street corners shouting at people. They invoke the phony lie of Islamophobia in order to marginalise and to ghettoise you and to make you feel like a victim because their whole existence depends on you being a victim. They claim to challenge the stereotyping of Muslims, and how do they do it? By stereotyping Muslims as professional complainers and malcontents who always want special treatment, who can't take the slightest criticism, and who are aggressively litigious to the point of obsession. These people are the problem. They're not the solution. If they could, they would rule you with a rod of iron. You know they want to impose Sharia. Everybody does. And you also know, if you've got any sense, that no Muslim in the United States would be better off under Sharia. So I have to ask you why you let them go on national TV time and time and time again, 
claiming to speak for you and why you let the TV networks get away with treating them as if they do. The Council on American-Islamic Relations has had a lot of mileage out of its phony baloney Islamophobia. It must be quite devastating for them to be confronted with concrete proof that this thing is entirely imaginary when they've staked so much on it. It must be like the Pope finding out there's no Holy Ghost. Now, if you insist on believing in Islamophobia, you'll have to do so despite all the evidence. You'll have to take it on faith. As Mark Twain might have put it, you'll have to believe what you know ain't so. Islamophobia ain't so. And you know it. The Islamofascists have done their very best to talk it into existence and to wish it into existence, but try as they might, they just can't persuade Americans to hate Muslims. Isn't reality a bitch? Peace.